Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like. Next up is Lou Graham from Foreigner. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be really cool. Don't forget to ring the bell so I can keep new cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where we see how all these different singers got to their levels of greatness in hopes to be able to help make you get to your level of greatness. So with that said, I want to get started with Lou and I have to say this is an absolute pleasure for me to do this one. Um, and I don't even know if I'm going to get a zillion views or not. It's not about that for me. Lou has been probably the biggest vocal influence to me of any singer alive. I kid you not, Lou Graham from Foreigner is probably my greatest vocal influence. Probably second to that would be, I'd say David Coverdale and then somewhere behind that falls Paul Rogers and Dio and you know Steve Walsh and some other guys. John Waite, believe it or not, like some other people you may not recognize. But anyway, um, I wanna specifically focus on Lou just because he's awesome, you know, and I want to talk about his awesomeness. Now, um, one of the things about Lou, and I'm going to break some of his, his stuff down, is he does use a lot of nasality in his sound, but he does it for, you know, for a reason, with good, with purpose. Um, but it's also part of his sound, right? And his real name is Louis Grammatico, by the way. Um, and the other thing is, is that I really have such crazy respect for his tone, his pitch, his being one of those kind of singers that could just be right out front, you know what I mean? Just right out front of the band, doesn't need like a ton of hoopla. His voice carries the band. Now, I'm not saying there aren't other singers like Steve Perry and others, whomever, uh, that do that, but not quite like Lou. Like, you know, Steve Perry, yes, of course he can sing a ballad and whatnot, but it's also a lot of the, the instrumentation that comes along with that that made him great. Um, that's true for even guys like Freddie Mercury. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, you know, orchestration and arrangements and things that showed showcased his talent, but in Lou Graham's case, he could just have a microphone, a single guitar and bass, and just boom, be right out front. And there's not a lot of people that can say that. So I want to just go ahead and dive right in and we'll just talk about it as we go. Here we go. Now these are demonstrations I've done and I'll put the full versions of them in the description so you can see um, the total versions of these. And then I plan on doing more stuff from him so I'm not sure when I'm going to release this so if there's more that I put out uh, I'll try to remember to put those in here as well. So here we go. Lou Graham, Foreigner, Yahoo. This song is called Long Long Way From Home. Hey, cool. Now, you know, it was a Monday, right? Right away, first of all, it's real high range, so it's really tough to sing. Second, his use of the way he's able to compress air in the abdomen and hit these really quick, snappy phrases. So it's, he's using a very, like we've talked a lot about contiguous phrase singing. Well, this is kind of the opposite of that. I know John Fogarty does that, and you know, ACDC and, you know, Back in Black, and, you know, some other things like that. There's a lot of other singers that do it, but not quite like Lou. So here to Lou is just slamming his voice in this upper mid voice register, number one, which is really hard to do. Um, he's able to throw tiny little H's. You was a Monday, day like any other day. Right, I'm kidding. Um, no, but anyway, have really small vocal track changes, which is really cool while making you think you're hearing big vocal track changes. So what does that mean? It means that Within the vocal tract itself, he's able to stay, like instead of playing a regular game of golf, he's kind of playing miniature golf up high. So he's using all of the different kinds of techniques that you'd use down low, but he's compressing those techniques. So, it was a Monday, day like any other day, I left the small town of the 
apple in decay. You know, of needed to do. Instead, needed to do. Right? It's real small. He stays really small on the sound. His vocal tone is to die for. It's so good. Like, I wouldn't die for it, but pretty close. <laughs> You'll probably die trying if you don't know what you're doing. But seriously, I mean, his vocal tone was just golden throat, golden voice tone. I really, when I said John Wade, I wasn't kidding. John Wade is another one of those guys who can listen like to the babies and I'll, I'll try to you know, do some stuff here in a minute and we can talk about that. But, um, but so there's that, right? And then what's really interesting is his expansive range. So he's not just kind of like Fogarty where Fogarty's I think kind of sings basically in two octaves, right? Or one and a half octaves, two octaves most of the time. Lou sings in about three and a half octaves and he is just a beast at doing it. So. And even when he does do things that stress out the chord a bit, you know, and I'm going to get into that because we're going to play a couple more songs that do this. Um, he does it in such a cool way that it's like, that was cool. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't technically perfect, but it was just cool. So anyway, let me continue and I'll, we'll, we'll talk some more about it. Here we go. Point. I mean, it's just, and then great melodic choices too. So not only were did he have a lot of good melody and his lyrics were cool, but he also had a good uh, command of his phrasing. So, you know, it was really, really sexy bluesy. So it's not like real uh, monotone. I was inside looking outside all the millions of it. You know, it's real swag. I was inside looking outside all the millions of faces, but still I'm alone. Right, he's got this like, really cool swag. So, so there's that side of Lou, right? There's that side. Then there's another side of Lou. And again, I'm gonna, I can't, I wish I could, you know, like you've seen me do vocal demonstrations like, say you will, say you won't. You know, I love that song. I, I love like almost anything he's ever done. It's 17, you probably don't even remember these really old songs. But, um, but he also can sing a ballad like there's no, like nobody's business. I've been waiting for, I've been waiting for a girl like you to come into my life. Right? All these beautiful, beautiful songs. So it's not just that he's a rock guy, but he's a rock guy that's sexier than heck when it comes to singing a ballad too. But anyway, let's get into this. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second, but this song is a lot of range. In the rain, it's called Jukebox Hero. So now, this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about using mass correctly in a way. Now, Lou doesn't subscribe necessarily to my open throat technique, so you'd be surprised. You'd think, well, gosh, Ken, you'd gravitate more towards a Dio or a Coverdale or a bigger, rounder sounding voice than Lou uh, you, if you like open throat so much. Well, what I've done is I, in my singing course, I walk you through this step by step, guys, how you can take and get a round, big, round tone, bring that up into the head and drop it down into the face where Lou's is pushed all really far forward into the face. Again, you know, there's lots of guys, whether it's Axl Rose, if we're talking rock guys or soul guys, you know, um, Stevie Wonder, you know, we've talked about this a lot of times. But anyway, so, how on guitar, so I love, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So he pushes it way up into the face, but he does that because it creates this, there's little places in space um, cavities inside the head that you can push that, you know, those sounds up into to get to those places of, of height and range and also pitch and tone. So he's using it for that reason. And, and again, I, I cover this all in my singing course, especially when we go through the E vowels and the A vowels and singing like the number eight and diphthongs and things like that that help you get into these places. So let's continue. If you listen to the original of this song and then you listen to me, Lou's actually leaning into it a little bit more than I am. I'm actually really trying to pace myself and control myself and maybe uh, he just kind of does a little bit of this, hopes that he makes it from section to section. I don't know. But what I do know for me is that I'm going, there's another section coming up that is a lot higher than this. And if I push too hard in this, I'm gonna have a beastly time trying to get to the next section. So I wanna point that out. So notice, again, scrutinize his original version next to my version, and you'll see I'm a little conservative on it because I'm not, and I like his tone a little better than mine in this particular section, though I actually can sing with more range than him when push comes to shove because I'm able to relax and release and pace myself. So let's get oh, I'm gonna go up a little farther because there's a big instrumental break and then there's some higher notes that happen at the end. So I'm gonna try to find where it is here, right about here. So let's go here. Now Lou doesn't do that. That's the difference between the way I compress there and the way he compresses there is he's real quick and stabby, never really holds notes very long. You know, right, I can get into those spaces uh, and hold them, whereas he's not prone to do that because he's pulling a lot of chest into the sound and isn't uh, relaxing the larynx the, and, and using most of the diaphragm to do all his work to relax into the breath. So anyway, so that's yet another part to Lou Graham. So um, let's, let's move on. Uh, then, then there's this, which is, you guys got to remember this ballad, I'm sure. Check this out. I'm going to take a little time. All that air. A oh. little time to think things over. I better read between the lines. In case I need it when I'm older. Do that again so so then he has the ability to do what I tell you guys not to do and that's to use a lot of air so but he does it while he's compressing kind of like I show you with glottal compression but he sneaks a little extra air across and somehow the brother is able to hold it together and cut back that air as he goes up but you know I'm gonna take a little time a little time to think things over cut all that air you better read between the lines in case I need it when I'm older, right? And then in life, he goes into that section, you hear him pull back the air really quick, and then he compresses it immediately so that he's not using that kind of air. However, when he does say you will, and I'll try to put those in the description so you can A-B some of this stuff, and then when he does, um, you know, I've been waiting for a girl like you, he does, I've been waiting, 
He has all this air up top. I'm going, man, you know, most people, if they would do that, they would, uh, they would take a flamethrower of air and they dry out their vocal folds so much, they'd have a tough time getting back into resonance, getting back to a, a clear, uh, you know, tone, a uh, clear singing tone to where you don't hear extra air going on the chords, but he's able to pull that off too. So pretty incredible stuff, but let's continue. Here we go. Choice of licks and soul, very blue eyed soul. This mountain I must climb. Some of the good guys that were, that, that were good at that were like, you know, Hall and Oates and stuff like that. There were a few blue eyed soul bands, um, you know, and of course we can't forget the Mark Farners of the world and the Steve Walsh's and all the guys that used a lot of soul in it too. So there was a, quite a few guys back then that had a lot of really great soul in their voice. He just happened to be one that was just a little notch above for my own personal preference of what I wanted to sound like as a singer to gravitate towards. So anyway. Like a world upon my shoulder, upon my shoulder. Through the clouds I see love shine It keeps me warm as life goes colder All those H's. How I wanna change this holy high. You know, you're, I'm constantly opening up, uh, or, you know, uh, throwing an H in there to keep the throat open, um, so I'm not getting caught on slamming a vowel sound or letting a consonant sound come in and close off my throat as well. So notice my use of mask. I wanna know what love is. I want you to show me. Right, I really, you know, up in here with this stuff. So uh, that's also, now this is a pretty long song. It's, uh, you know, got under five minutes or something. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing with you. So again, if you wanna see it all, I'll put that in the in the description here. But let me let me back, go up a little farther here and see. Oh, and I like his vibrato. So he's got more little boy voice going on than me. I'm kind of blowing a little chunks here. I'm not doing it quite as good as Lou at this section. Though I do get up into his upper register kind of like he does, which is hard coming up. So you kind of get the point, right? So again, for you guys out there that know Lou, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I promised, you know, to show you like a couple things. So, and then, and, and let me, I was talking about, you know, being that kind of guy that could just be right out front. So you have like, I'm um, gonna pick here. Um. I would climb any mountain 
mountain I'd sail across the stormy sea If that's what it takes me, baby To show how much you mean to me you know, right? So it's that kind of vocal that could just sit right out front. And we were talking about another singer, and I'm only bringing him up, not because he sounds like Lou, but we talk about golden voice, you know, golden throat, you know. I was. Driving faster than you want me to. Can't help myself when I'm alone with you. All right. Right? Remember John Waite, the babies? I'm all right. Now, if you go back and listen to some John Waite, some early baby stuff, he also has that really golden throat stuff. In fact, I think I'm gonna cover a couple baby's tunes. I know I'm not gonna get a bunch of hits out of it, just somebody I really like as a singer, and I'd love to pay respect to that. So, anyway, gang, um, again, I cover all of this in my singing course, how to sing better than how to sing better than anyone else. You, again, you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com for you guys interested in this kind of singing or any kind of singing. I build, I build a runner's body, I build great voices, and you can translate that into any kind of singing that you want, whether it's Lou Graham, whether it's pop, rock, R&B, whatever it is, uh, you can. So, And I'm doing most of this by request, gang, so um, if you have somebody that you'd like me to cover um, and do a vocal takedown of, please put that in the, in the description and uh, check out my next video. Oh.